How's it changed me? Well, I have a deeper relationship with God, number one. And number two, things are not important in this world. Nothing. You can replace everything, but you cannot replace human life. You cannot. Nothing will replace that. So the most important things you have are your faith, God, your family, your friends. Those are things that can be taken away from you and you can't get back. All this other stuff we have in our lives that we spend all this money on, it means nothing. In the grand scheme of things, nothing. That's it. South Tower, stand by for emergency towns. I think we're doing to sit on the table. We are. Go back one, go ahead. Go back one, ground standby has become a flight. In 1985, AeroVac Life Team was established by a group of local citizens to provide critical care air medical transportation and ensure immediate access to definitive health care for their remote community in the Missouri Ozark region. Although air ambulances were primarily based in larger cities at the time, the company's founders believed that the people who need air medical transport the most were those living in rural areas, often too far away from a hospital. Today, AeroVac Life Team has grown to be the largest independently owned and operated air ambulance service in the United States, with over 100 bases. Since its founding, the company has transported more than 250,000 patients in need serving as the critical link to improved response time and immediate access to medical care facilities for numerous rural communities across 14 states. And when every second counts. Airbag one, have you listed ETE 10 minutes, ATC 1444 on this step? Airbag one, go ahead. ATC 1444, SL, RAD, 110 minutes on the field button. If you're like me, you either live in a rural area or you spend a lot of time outdoors in places like this, places you'd certainly consider to be rural. 46 million Americans live in rural areas, places that are more than an hour away from a level one or two trauma center or a cardiac or stroke specialty care hospital, the kind of places you find in major cities. The fact of the matter is that rural trauma victims are twice as likely to die from an accident or medical condition as urban victims because of a failure to get to the hospital within a period of time known as the golden hour. Airbag 1, Airbag 01, team flight request, Caulfield, Missouri, for a trauma patient heading 247, distance of 14. The paradigm shift that Airbag created in this industry is the idea that by placing the aircraft closest to the people in need, so that when their worst day of their life happens, whether that be an accident or a, a cardiac event or a stroke, that you're there quickly to pick them up and take them directly in, whereas historically all of the aircraft were based in the city and had to fly out to the person in need, load them, and then fly back, which really was double the amount of time that it takes us today. And that's when you count on those resources around you to make that difference of so whether you either have a quality of life down the line or whether you even make it, quite frankly. AeroVac Life Team has established itself as the preeminent provider of air ambulance services to rural markets, serving over 1,700 diverse referral sources, including more than 1,000 hospitals and 700 EMS agencies, and attracting more than 850,000 members in support of its presence in their local communities to provide rapid access to advanced health care and save lives or improve outcomes for patients with critical health needs. AeroVac Life Team operates the world's largest fleet of Bell 206 helicopters, and this is the place that makes it possible. The Completion Center here in West Plains, the 50,000 square foot state-of-the-art facility that employs over 70 aviation professionals, specialists in mechanics and avionics, sheet metal and painting. This place is completely unique 
than the air medical industry? Well, a completion center is two things. We actually take a green aircraft, which is brand new, and convert it into an air ambulance. That's one. And the other thing that we do is we refurb our old aircraft that are inside our existing fleet. The completion center from time to time does seem like an aircraft factory. I mean, we produce 20 aircraft, if you're looking at it from a factory standpoint, through there annually. Eight new, 12 performance plus. We know this aircraft inside and out. We've been maintaining this aircraft for 25 years. Bell Helicopter has certified us at our jig fixtures, and we are one of a very few amount of companies that are in the United States that have the Bell mainframe fixture that can do deep overhaul and repair. We have to perform preventive maintenance, routine inspections, and replace components on, on a schedule uh, to guarantee that the aircraft will continue to operate perfectly. We all believe in the, in the common cause. We all believe in, in one goal, one outcome, um, which, is, which is patient care. Uh, everything that we do here in West Plains is a support network to everything that we do out in the field. The base is our front line, or our storefront, if you will, and everything that's performed here in West Plains is support of that storefront. Point to uh, the numeric address, please. Well, this is the command and control, or nerve center, for AirVac Life Team. This is CINCOM, and it's open 24 hours a day, every day of the year. Whenever a call comes in to AeroVac Life Team for help, that help starts right here from West Virginia all the way to Texas and everywhere in between. Turn an HFE of 1285, RA5, flight part 91 at 940. Roger, 38 is departure space, the traveler part 91 at route 13. I think that this company, um, through having an operational control center, goes as far as anybody can possibly go. I can't think of anything else that you could do to make it more safe. It we have a robust ability to affect the flight. Communication specialists include over 90 emergency medical technicians, paramedics, and air communication specialists whose expertise further maximizes the prompt, safe deployment and turnaround time that rural residents need to improve their outcomes. The company's instrument-rated pilots are skilled aviators who become proficient air medical pilots by training under its proprietary and Federal Aviation Authority approved program. Each certified pilot meets FAA standards and has flown, on average, more than 5,700 hours. It's such a fulfilling feeling when you're flying the line to be able to directly impact someone's life, lots of lives, you know, family lives. And when you lift with a critically ill or injured patient and you know that the expedience with which you get to that hospital or trauma center uh, is all in your hands. And when you do that and you complete that run and they say, well, they're gonna make it, it's like, wow, this is, this is something. Aerovac Life Team is among the few air medical companies to utilize five dedicated flight simulators as part of its routine training program. Pilots must also achieve standards established in the company's proprietary FAA-approved training program of operational and procedural instruction, as well as aircraft and mission-specific training in the Bell 206 Long Ranger and Bell 407 helicopters. Rapid response from highly qualified medical professionals is key to impacting outcomes. As such, AeroVac Life Team employs medical professionals with advanced emergency and critical care skills. A registered nurse and paramedic are on every mission. Each specialist brings skills and experience that, when combined, enables the team to deliver the care required immediately as they arrive at the scene of an accident or medical emergency. I think the medical crew are making time critical decisions in very extreme, difficult environments more than anything. It's real simple. The people that work for us are a unique breed. It takes someone that's truly committed to know that I'm going to go out in the field where I have very limited resources and I'm still going to provide that high level of care. Copy, five minute lift, eight minute flight, 138 Alpha Echo Crew, Chandler Davis. My job's good medicine for me. It's, uh, it's always a thrill. It's never boring. Uh, you're always able to grow with it. And uh, I'm just, I'm worried about that day when, uh, when will I be too old? What will I do then? So uh, I hope I can. I hope I can do this for a long, long time. I'm, I'm nowhere near ready to give this up. Uh, even 25 years into pre-hospital care.
Aravac Life Team provides superior effectiveness in patient care and safety. Key elements to the success of its operations are the company's substantial commitment of financial and expert human resources, experienced and professional management of a common infrastructure, standardized and centrally controlled operations, well-defined policies, procedures and protocols, communication systems and billing and collection systems deliver a highly effective operation. Ultimately, operations result in a streamlined, lower-cost infrastructure that ensures financial stability and operational longevity to be in a position to serve out its mission of delivering high-quality medical emergency response to rural communities. Hey, Tom, we are in communication with the ground unit on the scene, and I'm showing an eight-minute ET. At Aravac Life Team, safety is of the utmost importance. It's also very, very important that you feel completely empowered to continue this strong emphasis on safety and adherence to all safety protocols once the Aravac Life Team helicopter arrives at your scene. Tower, stand by for emergency time. As the ordering agency requesting a helicopter on a scene, you will be received into Aravac Life Team's Central Communication Center. Communication specialists need the following information regarding your flight request. The name of your agency, the nature of the request, such as motor vehicle accident, traumatic injury or medical emergency, and the location of the designated landing zone where the aircraft will be landing, so that the location of your request can be pinpointed and verified using Aravac Life Team's state-of-the-art mapping software. Aravac Line Ground Standby has become a flight. I'll do that. To best determine the most accurate location of the LZ, you may provide GPS coordinates, road intersections, or a specific address. In some instances, a general proximity of the actual landing zone is available early on in the call and can be updated as first responders arrive on the scene and can relay more specific instructions to the landing zone's location. Communication specialists will also ask you the patient's weight to allow the pilots to make weight and balance calculations to and from the scene with your patient. And although it could change, specialists may also inquire about the proposed destination for the patient from the scene. You will also be asked your name and a callback number. In addition, you will always be asked if any other aircraft has turned down the flight for weather or other circumstances, and are there any additional aircraft en route, on the scene, or outbound from the scene or the area. In many cases, once a call is received by Aravac Life Team, a team of several communication specialists will be processing your request simultaneously, checking weather conditions, verifying coordinates and instructions, and dispatching the closest aircraft all at the same time. So as the initial caller making the request, staying on the line with communication specialists until all information is received is necessary and speeds the process of aircraft to the scene. Generally, the pilot will go straight to the aircraft and the medical personnel will get all of the pertinent details and then come to the aircraft and then we'll start the aircraft together. They'll load in the aircraft and as we lift, generally, uh, dispatch will give us at least a latitude and longitude, a uh, general direction in which to fly. Approximate distance um, and then they'll de redefine that as we get nearer to the scene. The goal of safety now broadens its scope with the inclusion of police, fire, and EMS professionals, each filling an important role in the safe landing and departure of the aircraft. Aravac Life Team's pilots will be in direct communication with the incident commander or the designated landing zone coordinator via radio regarding the scene. As the landing zone coordinator, Aravac Life Team would also like for you to ensure that the following safety procedures have also been put in place as you assume an important role in the aircraft's and the scene's safety. Your first order is choosing the best area on the scene or near the scene that considers the following safety considerations. Locate a reasonably flat area clear of people, vehicles and obstructions such as trees, poles and overhead wires. If it's a field, the area must be free of stumps, brush, posts. A safe landing zone should be 100 feet by 100 feet, day and night. You should also note and consider wind direction as helicopters land and take off into the wind. Choose a designated landing zone that has an approach free of obstructions. 
Any obstruction in the area should be relayed to the helicopter crew on initial radio contact, along with the landing zone description with specific landmarks using directions like north, south, east and west as opposed to left of or in front of when describing specifics to your scene. This clarifies your information to the pilot. We're going to take at least one orbit to feel comfortable going in to make sure that I haven't missed an obstacle, a tall tree, a high line pole, some more wires. You have to make sure before I start that approach because once we're established inbound on that approach, things get really, really slow because we're checking every time for the very same things. AeroVac Life Team pilots will always make one circle around the scene, verifying information regarding the landing zone and confirming any hazards that you have identified. Once safely landed, the helicopter will either shut down, which requires a two-minute cool down before the pilot shuts down the engine, or in some cases the aircraft may be left running or hot depending on the circumstances of the patient. Do not approach the aircraft. The AeroVac Life Team flight crew will always come to you. The landing zone coordinator or incident commander should assign a tail rotor guard who should stand a safe distance outside the aircraft's disc and serve to deny all access to the rear of the aircraft. The most dangerous part of the helicopter is obviously the tail. The tail, that tail rotor is spinning so fast that you cannot see it turn. You should never approach any helicopter from the rear due to the danger of the aircraft's tail rotor. In fact, you should never approach a running helicopter unless instructed to do so by the crew. And if so, always approach from the front and in full view of the pilot only when the pilot motions you that it's safe to do so. But again, in nearly all situations, the AeroVac Life Team flight crew will come to you. Once we arrive on scene and uh, we make contact, say, with the, the ambulance crew, uh, we're definitely going to get a verbal report from them. Uh, this is all ongoing as we're providing care and our assessments, so uh, you're, you're multitasking. You've got a lot going on at one time. One of us may be taking care of an airway problem while the other team member is getting as much detailed report as to what happened. Your patient may look fairly stable, but the fact that they had a fatality in the same vehicle that they were riding in, that tells you a lot of potential that could be wrong with your patient. So it may not be anything that you can see at this moment, but that's going to happen over a course of period of the next hour or so, which again makes that a, definitely a criteria to, to fly that individual. So all these details are very important that we learn about our patients. Now that the patient is ready to depart, you will receive instructions from the flight crew regarding how they would like you to assist. Flight crew members will always request only the minimum number of persons needed when loading the patient, which is always a foot first load. Any personnel asked to assist in loading the patient should have all gear and equipment secure and fastened. Also ensure all sheets and blankets are secure, especially when approaching a running aircraft. But when you move under the rotor system, the, the first thing that, that you, you lose is verbal communications. There's no talking, it's, uh, you can't hear. So it's maintaining eye contact with all team members under the rotor system. It's just moving slow and purposeful. Once your assistance is complete and the patient is loaded, exit the landing zone from the front of the aircraft at a 45 degree angle off the nose keeping eye contact with the pilot, and once clear, remain out of the aircraft's rotor disc until the aircraft departs. It's also important to keep the landing zone secure until after the aircraft has departed the scene and is out of sight. This ensures that the landing zone remains clear of vehicles, pedestrian traffic, and foreign objects should the aircraft need to return to the scene. AeroVac Life Team is the largest air medical program in the country to complete implementation of night vision technology at all of its air ambulance bases. A $7 million investment in safety and for pilots and crew, literally turning night into day. Simply stated, the night vision goggle simply amplifies available light um, up to 100 times. So if you, as long as you have any ambient light whatsoever, the goggles are going to compensate, in other words, magnify that light uh, to a great degree. It's kind of a different mindset from what a lot of the LZ uh, uh, folks who had been trained earlier, it's a, it's a different mindset than what we once taught them. And that is when we're coming in, try to keep the illumination at a low level 
It's great to illuminate the area, but make sure your spotlights are shining away from the aircraft. With the NVGs, we really don't need the highlight. Uh, it's very, very uh, blinding, literally blinding to us if you put a spotlight on our eyes with the goggles on. We do everything possible to be as safe as we possibly can. Now, having said that, again, aviation is not inherently risky. I, I am not one of those that say it's inherently risky. But it can be, if not properly managed. You've got to take the risk out of, out of it yourself. And that all starts with the crew. A crew that works together, uh, that, that manages that risk together. It's extremely important uh, that all crew members be read in to that mission or that flight and uh, try to mitigate any of those risks. Documented annual safety training for all employees and staff of your agency who are involved with helicopter operations is highly recommended. Putting these safety procedures to work every time AeroVac Life Team comes to your scene or community will help ensure the safest possible environment for all.